Uh, we just got to continue to emphasize details, um, sense of urgency in, in everything that we're doing throughout the week. Um, nothing just shows up on Sunday. So it's being able to get after it throughout the week and, and practicing and um, every aspect of our preparation moving forward, um, details and urgency. Is there a point where you can talk too much about that and then it gets into your head like, you know, you got to block this? Yeah, I don't think we're at that point. Mm -hmm. is there, is, does emotion play into this at all? Is this strictly a football thing? Or is there an energy, emotional factor in this in terms of the beginning of games? I, I don't really understand. I, I guess, I guess, if you guys are getting off the slow starts, could mm -hmm. is could uh, more energy be a factor? Could could you guys get more energy? Like, is it strictly like, hey, we have to execute football things, or mm -hmm. is it is it like an energy? Emotion? I, I think football is an energy type of thing. You know, you have to have that passion, intensity, that drive. You know, everything in it. Um, so I think that is that is football. The the two aren't um, separated completely. Execution um, and, and emotion. But, but football as a whole is that combination of both. So we got to continue to be able to push football. How about uh, getting pressure on the quarterback? How about you? Mm -hmm. Would that be in? And what, what kind of things happen when you do that? Mistakes from the other quarterback? Yeah, well? it, it's crucial. Um, and uh, it, it's fo football is being able to help each other out, offense being able to complement defense. and. Um, our pass rush has got to be able to complement our secondary and, and vice versa. We've got we to gotta help each other out more, um, be playing for each other. We're not beating the team across of us. Across us. We're helping our offense out. We're helping out our own team um, get going that way. When you look at this past game, I mean, you guys had more total yards than them. You kept Cooper mm -hmm. Cup in check. You had more first downs, time of possession, mm -hmm. on the turnover battle. Uh, do you guys feel like you're close, like you're there for it all coming together? Mm -hmm. Um. What's great about this team, and I think the way that this is going to turn out to be in our favor, the way this season has started, is the um, how can we improve that that sort of growth mindset that we're kind of pressing, leaving no stone unturned, being able to um, constantly reevaluate from from a, a not a detached um, position, but um, an area where you're open, open-minded to to whatever we can do to get better, we're going to do it. We're going to correct it. We're going to address it. And we know it's to to be better each and every week. I think that's going to help us down the road. ESPN has you guys as the top-rated. You you guys have the top-rated pass rush win rate, which I'm sure they have some kind of analytic for. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like when you guys are watching the film that you guys are having that success? I mean, obviously, you aren't necessarily getting sacks, but does it feel like you guys mm -hmm. are doing what you need to do to, to put some pressure on the quarterback? That's a good question. Um, we are we are having success, um, but but the bottom line isn't there yet. So. Um, not so much worried about moral victories or anything like that. We just, we got to be better, you know. Is it about consistency? <clears throat> Definitely about consistency, consistency throughout the week. Um, I, I think that's another thing that you work, you know, Monday through Saturday, continuing to be consistent in everything that we're doing. And then that that's where it shows up on Sunday. It's not just something you wait to happen on game day. You know, Rams had three scoring drives in the first three possessions, and they, I think they went three in a row, three and out. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute that to? Is that in-game adjustments? And, uh, mm -hmm. how, does, how does it go from one to the other? Yeah, uh, I think as football players and as a, as a uh, football coaches and players, both our, our primary job is to solve issues in a timely fashion. I think if you boil down football to its essence, that is that is the goal to be able to solve problems. Everybody's got a game plan going into the game. How do we adjust off of that? What are they doing to attack us? Um, so being able to solve those problems in an efficient um, and effective way um, is what the game is about. You guys, uh, you guys have had some issues against the Panthers in terms of wins and losses. Do they do anything special? I mean that. 
you can put your finger on, or is it just one of those things on a year to year basis? That just yeah. I mean, they got some d dynamic players. Um, definitely being able to, to limit their impact on the game is going to be uh, reflective on, on the win and loss on Sunday. What do you know you're getting in Baker Mayfield? He's an athlete. You're, you're definitely going to get a, a, a everything he's got, so it'll be a, a fun game for sure. Well, Baker sure is an athlete. Is he a guy that if you get some pressure on, you can force him to make some mistakes? Yeah, we're definitely – I feel like that – that's a focus every week is we got to bring heat heat to our quarterback, the quarterbacks we're facing, um, just because it, it, it's it's too good of a league to allow a quarterback to sit back there. When you have a quarterback that you've faced a couple times in the past, but he's now in a new team and a new system, mm -hmm. so does it help you that you faced him in the past, or because he's in that new system, does it kind of change the dynamic? I, I I think it's it's somewhere in between, you know, you know his style of play, and now it's understanding. All right, well, how how has this new scheme? How has he adjusted? Um, it, it's kind of got to be a, a full picture when you're looking at it. As that's a that's somebody you always need to be able to identify where he's at on the field and understand how he's being used to create mismatches and just his his individual effort. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you. What's going on? You guys uh, started out a game, you know, a lot of coaches, I mean, this is on all levels where teams kind of script out those first few plays and everything like that. I mean, what's what's that like for the regular part of the offense? I mean, do you, do you guys kind of have an idea of what's coming when that game first starts out in terms of this script? Or is it, it for most players other than the quarterback, are you just waiting to hear what the play calls? Yeah, we're just waiting to hear what the coach has to call, um, and then it's up to us to go out and execute it. Um, but we don't we don't know which plays um, are going to be called to start the game. So Kyler says after the game, 
him, hey, guys, got to, quote, stay awake. You know, I have free reign. <clears throat> what, what does he mean by that? What message is he trying to send you? Like? Yeah, he's basically just saying, uh, I mean, sometimes you call plays and guys have, like, deeper routes, like posts that normally you kind of don't get to. Um, and he's just telling those guys just to stay alive um, because with Kyler, man, he, he could roll out and scramble and um, chuck one deep. And if you're not running your route fully and he throws it, then it just looks bad. Like, so, uh, I mean, our receiver coach tells us every play is designed to get the ball to one of us. So um, run full speed. And every time the, a play is called, I always think that your number's getting called. So just play fast. That's what he means by that. When you have a quarterback like Kyler, he starts to improvise and what goes through your mind? What's your mindset? Yeah, man, I always think I'm getting the ball because um, I, I want the ball every play, but um, I, I know it doesn't work like that. But just having a guy like Kyler back there, um, just making things work with his legs if if the pocket folds. Um, so just, just being ready for that and just trying to stay alive. Um, I don't know, man, Kyler's a, he's a great guy. He's a great athlete. So just being ready um, if, he, if he does scramble out of the pocket. <laughs> Obviously, great faith in yourself and, and being able to succeed. But three weeks in, did, did you expect to be this big of a part of the offense? Um, yeah, honestly. Um, I knew that when my number was called, um, I would be ready. I, I waited for this opportunity for a long time. So um, just got to continue to just get better uh, day by day. I have not arrived. I have a lot to work on. Um, but, yeah, I definitely expected everything that I'm doing right now, I expected it from myself. So. Yeah. Not that you didn't have confidence, but as you continue to have success, can you feel your confidence grow with each game? Um, I mean, yeah, I'd be wrong to say no. Like I said, I've always had confidence, like from day one. Um, I, I, I've known what I've been, I know what I'm capable of. Um, so the confidence hasn't grown and it hasn't shrunk. It's always been there. Um, but it just feels good to just make plays for the team um, and just be one of those guys that they count on. As great as these first few games have been, does this game mean more to you, given where it is and where you play in college? Uh, yeah, no. I mean, I, I played for the Panthers. They they were one of the teams that gave me a shot my rookie year, um, and then they also released me. So it definitely means something. Um, the Rams game last week meant something to me. They cut me as well. Um, so my job is to just go out and make plays and. I don't know, man, create opportunities for myself and see what happens after that. If it's their range like it's supposed to, why would that kind of change the complexion of this offense? Yeah, I mean, that's up to the coaches. Um, my job is to go out there and um, if they call my number and throw me the ball, catch the ball. Um, but scheme-wise, that's up to them. Um, I'm sure they'll have something drawn up um, so we can capitalize on that. As an offense, do you guys get too deep into – amongst yourselves, just like where you guys are with the starts and, and trying to get something consistent? Or do you try and stick with like, okay, let's just go out, do our normal practice, and eventually it'll come together? Uh, I think, I mean, I just feel like we're close. We're, uh, we're, we're missing out on little things that um, eventually um, you'll, you'll start to see it click. But uh, I think we just need to go out and just continue to do what we've been doing. Um, and... I feel like I feel like it's gonna turn around for us. We just gotta focus on the little details and um, everything uh, playing out the way it's supposed to. Craig, what are those little things? Is it a missed block, a, a route, a drop ball? What, what are those things? Man, I wish I could tell you. I honestly, personally, don't have the answer for that. Um, it just sucks, man, because I know we all want to win in that locker room. We're all competitors, um, and just for it to be consistent, starting slow, um, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, man, just blocking uh, on the perimeter. I feel like I can definitely get better at that. Um, uh, I don't know, man. I feel like I'm doing a really good job, honestly, at this point. Um, just trying to stay level-headed. I don't want to get too hyped. I don't want to get too low. Um, this is football, and I love to play football, so I just try to go out there and just make plays. Greg, have you started to hear from people about fantasy? Uh, I had a guy come up to me. I think he was a media guy. I actually in the locker room and asked me about some fantasy. I was like, "Well, I don't, I don't really even get into all of that. Like, I've never played fantasy. I don't have boys that play it. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I, of course, I'm on social media, so. You know what I'm saying? You might get a guy on your social media page and say, hey, you got me this many points this week, but I don't I don't really mind. I don't care about stuff like that. I just go out there and play football. Does things change a lot if AJ can't go for a game or two? Uh, I think we have guys that are ready to uh, step up and play. I mean, I, I love going out there and competing with AJ. Um, he's, a, he's a fierce competitor, um, so that's definitely going to be a, a big loss for us. But, man, this is the NFL, man. You got guys that are, have been waiting to play. Um, and it's next man up, and I'm excited to see those guys get a chance. Obviously, those of you who are healthy, you're not the tallest group mm-hmm. that are healthy right now. Do you think that makes a difference? Um, I mean, I'm five seven. I feel like I play pretty big. Um, I, I, it's football, man. Like you, you just got to catch the ball. You know what I'm saying, make people miss. Um, find ways to get guys the ball in their hands in space. Um, so size, I mean, yeah, it could help, but at the end of the day, those guys, we we just got to play football. And we got to be football players. So um, you can't measure heart. You can't measure um, what a guy has inside of him. Um, so height is, I mean, it looks good on paper, but you still got to go out and perform. When you look at this last game, I mean, you guys obviously didn't get the result you wanted, but there were a lot of positives where you guys, you know, outgained the Rams. You guys had more first downs, won a ton of possession. Do you feel like as a team you guys are close to it all coming together? Yeah, I do. Personally, honestly, I really do, man. It, like I said, it sucks just to just feel like you're that close and um, can't pull it out. But um, it's just a positive. Like you just gotta look at it in a positive way and say, man, we're we're really right here, um, and just try to figure out the things that we can hone in on to help us get over that hump. But I, me personally, I feel like we're right there. <laughs> What's your mentality at that point? You just looking to try and find some open space and see if you can spot him? Yeah, so it was uh, probably about 15 seconds before halftime. Uh, I think we had just got a penalty before that, so pushed us back out of field goal range. Um, coach caught a great play. Um, and as soon as the ball was snapped, I, I, I knew I was going to be open, but I, it was just a matter of if Kyler was going to throw it and then we were going to have him, uh, the right amount of time to complete it. Um, and as I was running and I saw him rolling out and he threw it, um, I knew it was going to be a catch. I actually didn't see the safety coming um, that hit me. It was a pretty big hit, um, but I hung on to the ball, and it just felt good to um, just set the team up in good field position right before halftime. And uh, I, I felt like that was a pretty big play before halftime, and it gave us some momentum going in. What do you guys have to do to get one of those chunk throws, those chunk plays in the offense? You know? Yeah, man, like I said, I have no idea. That's not up to me. My job is just to go out there and um, – Whatever route they tell me to run, run it to the best I can. Um, when they throw me the ball, catch it. Um, but s- schematically wise, that's that's not up to me. I'm not really sure. Craig, have you played on a team before where uh, a lot of the other receivers are, you know, basically your size? Um, no. <laughs> Personally, nah. Um, like I said, man, like. I'm not big on height. I just it's about making plays. Like, I know some six five guys who can't make plays. I know five eight guys who can make plays. So um, I'm not really big on the height and the weights and the measurements. It's just about going out there and doing your job. Thanks, Greg. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you.